Hi guys, on today's show, we're gonna to continue to talk about the DSR-1. That's right, this is part two. Today we're gonna to show you how to configure it so that you can install it into your stereo and your car. So let's get started. So this is part two in our DSR-1 series. Now that we've figured out which one of the three ways we're going to connect it in our car, we have to configure our DSR-1 so that we can do that. We have it hooked up on the bench. Let's check it out. All right, so for this, we are going to be using our iPad. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we're paired to our DSR-1. To do that, we simply push the Bluetooth icon and come up here and we can see that we are. Go ahead and select home. Now, what we're talking about today is this side right here where it says setup. The first thing we want to do is go into preferences. Some of these are going to be just displays and some of them are actually going to be features. So the first thing that pops up is the home screen. We're going to set up the home screen. And by that, I mean these two controllers right here. You have options for what they can be. The first one can be the sub level. The second one could be the master volume, but we can change it. So go into preferences, slider one, right now is set up to sub level. We'll go ahead and tap it. We can select sub level or punch EQ. For this, we're gonna leave it on sub level. All you have to do is tap it and the check mark will appear next to it. Go back to preferences, repeat the same process. Punch EQ, master level. So if you're using your iPad as your source and you'd like to be able to control everything from the iPad, so for example, if there's this in the dash, and you wanna be able to turn the system up or down with it, you can do that. Auto close for channel selector and advanced equalizer crossover plot overlay. These have to to do with once you dig into it and you're using the EQ and crossover. We'll come back to that a little bit later once we get into that side of this. But what they are is basically just display options. Select home, select setup, setup device. Now this is where all the magic is going to happen. This is where most of the important things are. And as I said, some of these are just gonna be displayed and some of these are actually going to be actual things you can touch and go into. The first thing that comes up is device mode. The second thing that comes up is system gain, PLC, knob that's the control knob PLC 2 and then we have input configuration output configuration now most of these are displays with the exception of this guy right here this one is the PLC knob configuration you could select not connected subwoofer level punch base or master level control not only can you use the volume control from the face of your smart device you can also have the PLC 2 as the main volume control for the system go ahead and select back if you select inputs it's going to display a picture of how you're choosing to set it up you can't adjust it from here. And then output is also going to be the same. For this particular setup, it's doing tweeters, mid bass, rear, and subwoofers. There again, you can't adjust it from this because these are only set up as display outputs. To adjust it, you want to come up here to the top where there's a picture of a car with a gear and select that. The first page that comes up is standalone universal harness or maestro T harness. For this, we're going to use the standalone universal harness. You just scroll up and down though to change them. Once you have what you want, come over here here and select OK, got it. Now it's gonna ask you, are you doing low level RCA inputs, high level speaker, or are you gonna do the SPDIF coax connection? For this, we're gonna select high level and select got it. Then it's gonna give you a warning screen that pops up to talk about that high level, low level switch that we talked about on the side of the unit. You have to make sure you've set it for high level. We've already done that, so we'll go ahead and select got it. Now, what is gonna feed those high level inputs? We have a couple choices. Is it just a front, meaning all we need is a front level left and right, they're full range, we're good. Do we want balance and fader, in which case we wanna get the fronts and the rears? Or is there a factory subwoofer in the car and two full range front inputs that we can use, in which case we can select front and sub. For this, we'll go ahead and do front and rear input and select OK, got it. Now what this is gonna do is give us a picture, like the one we just looked at, of how this is gonna set up. So we'll go back a minute, we'll select front sub, got it. And all it's done is change the font here that says sub now instead of rear. If you select the two channel, it'll just show this picture. So now that we know how we're going to connect the high level inputs, we'll go ahead and select got it. Now, what is this going to connect to? Are you just going to do front, rear, sub? And if you notice down here, there's dots. Flick to the left. Are you going to do a center channel, front, rear, sub? Are you going to do front tweeters, front, mid, rear fill, and subwoofer? Are you just going to do tweeter, mid base, and sub? Do you want to do center channel, front tweeter, mid base, subwoofer? Or a three-way set. We have tweeter, mid, mid base, and rear output. 
output. And then you just have the simple system, which is a set of front speakers and some subwoofers. Then you have that same system where you add in a center channel. So we're gonna go ahead and pick this one. We're gonna do some front tweeters, front mids, active, a set of rear fill, and some subwoofers. Select got it. Now this page here is asking you, are you actually going to hook up the PLC one? Do you want it to be the sub-level control, the punch level control, or the master level? For this, we're gonna select the master level. Select got it. Set up complete, press save to update device. So we'll select save. And now what it's done is these displays will reflect what we've just chosen. So we picked front and rear high level, and we picked the front active rear and sub. So now you can go ahead and select home. At this point, you can dive into the EQ settings. So we'll come over here and we'll select advanced. Now the first page that starts up under EQ is the equalizer, followed by the crossover, followed by time alignment, followed by trim level. Once you see an icon like this, this is the chain broken and this is the chain connected. So for example, if you want the front right tweeter to be a little less loud than the left front tweeter, you can easily do that. If you want them all to play at the same level, tap it and then they'll both change at the same time. So if your rear fill is too loud, you can come over here and turn it down and you can turn it up. If the one directly behind you is too loud, you can just turn that one down. Time alignment. As we talked about before, select over here in the top corner is a tape measure. Tap it. Then what you want to do is enter the distances from your ears to the speakers. So measure from your ear to the speaker, ear to the speaker, and then enter that information into here. So for example, so we'll say 32, we'll say 61. The mid bass will go ahead ahead and say 30 and then we'll say 59 rear fill behind my head let's say 34 now we'll go ahead and select save now what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and figure out the delay for you so that you don't have to now that's not to say you can't go in and adjust something after the fact you can easily move the sliders around you can do micro adjustments just by tapping the plus sign if you want to turn speakers out of phase you can tap these guys right here you can turn the delay down all the way for the sub once you get the time correction all set up to where you think it's the way to go, you can move on to the crossover. I'm not going through this in an order in which you should do it. Now what we want to do is pick the speaker we're going to set the crossover up for. In the top corner here, there is a speaker. So go ahead and tap the channel you want. In this case, we'll start with the tweeters and select close. Real quick, we'll select home. We'll select setup, preferences. The first thing here that says auto close. If we select on, go back to our crossover, we're going to select the speaker again. We'll change it to the front, mid bass. See how it just now auto closed without me hitting the X? That's what that one feature does. If we go back to the tweeter, it'll automatically auto close for us. Here you can pick which crossover points you want, high pass, low pass, or band pass on all the channels. And then once you're done, you can get to your EQ and start tuning your EQ. Simply by dragging, moving around, drag up. You can adjust your EQ simply by selecting the frequency and dragging it up and down, which we showed in the last video. All right, now what we want to do is we've gone ahead and set this up very generically, but just for the purpose of this video. The reason why is because we want to go back to our homepage, select setup, and select manage presets. From here, we're going to go ahead and select the plus key, and it's going to ask you, create user presets, new with factory settings, download or cancel. We're going to select download from device. This is the device it's downloading it from. We can come over here and select test, and then we can rename it, put notes in here, YouTube. Now we've gone ahead and made a preset that we can select from our device. Now, if we'd like to go back and listen to our previous EQ settings, simply tap on it, select the box with the arrow, upload to device, send via email, send via text, cancel. We're gonna select upload to device. Warning, device settings and tuning will be overwritten. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Now what that's doing is taking your previous EQ settings and moving them over into the box. Now go ahead and select home, select tune, select advanced, and then when you start back up, there will be the EQ setting preset that you used previously before. If you wish to switch back, just reverse the process. Select test, load to device, select yes, and now the default preset is set to test. All right guys, so that's how you set it up so that it'll function in your car. One side note, when you are using the EQ, something to keep in mind, it will do plus 10 dB and negative 24 dB. So don't feel bad if you have to go below zero in order for it to sound good. You're not losing anything. There's a lot more negative adjustments than there are positive adjustments. All right, Fernando, you good? All right. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like. You know where you find us. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, also in Twitter. 
You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye.